In this section, we're going to talk about composite functions. But before we get into uh, composite functions and what they really mean, we want to go back and we want to discuss the domain of a function again. We've already seen in a previous section um, how we define and how we how we find the domain of a function. Remember, the domain of the function are all of the possible x values for that function. It is officially, um, or maybe you could think of it, I guess, as it's the largest set of all the real numbers for which f of x is real. But that's kind of wordy, so really you're just talking about all of the possible x values. When we are dealing with the domain of a function, remember that there are two key factors that we need to consider when we're thinking about the variable x. We already know that we're not allowed to have zero in the denominator of a fraction. So anytime I have the variable x in the denominator, I need to, ta I need to take care of that and pay attention to it. The other thing that we want to consider is we don't, uh, since we're, we are restricting this to all of the real numbers, we cannot take the square root of a negative number and get a real value. So anytime I have the variable x falling underneath a square root symbol like this, we have to take care of it as well. We would be solving for where that function is or for what values uh, cause that to be greater than or equal to zero. We're allowed to have zero under the radical, just not anything less than zero. So those are really the only two factors that we have to consider when we are talking about the domain of a function. So I have four examples we're going to focus on down here. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger for us. And the first one that we're going to look at is this function f of x, which is equal to x squared plus 5x. Now remember, we're only looking really for those two key factors. So you can see here that if this is my function, there are no uh, variables in the denominator. So uh, no x in the denominator. Okay, that's good. We also do not have x under a square root symbol. And if that's the case, then neither of these two scenarios are happening. So the domain of this function is just simply all real numbers or from negative to positive infinity. And let's just kind of think about that for just a second. Try to envision this because you're trying to find out what values for x are not allowed in my function. What, what Are there any numbers on the number line I would have to throw out? So if I think of all of the negative numbers and I square a negative number, I'm going to get a positive value, and I add that to a negative number. I don't have anything that's illegal here. Uh, 0 plus 0 is still okay. And then um, if I have a positive number squared plus a larger positive, then I still have a positive value. So really, you're looking at a function here which has all real numbers for the domain. Okay. How about this one over here? Let's look at this letter B. In this particular example, we are talking about g of x equal to 3x over x squared minus 4. And again, if we're just thinking in terms of the variable being under a radical or in the denominator, you can see here that I have this portion, this variable x is in the denominator, and that's the only part I really have to focus on. So I'm going to take that denominator, x squared minus 4, and I'm going to set it equal to 0 to find what numbers, if I plug them in for x, cause the denominator to be equal to 0. So I add 4 to the other side, and now I just simply take the square root of both sides, and I find out that uh, the square root of 4 is a positive and a negative 2. So positive and negative 2, when I plug them into x in the denominator, are going to cause the denominator to be 0. So these are the two numbers that we are not allowed to have in our uh, domain. We have to throw them out. Now how do I write the domain then in interval notation if I'm throwing out only the numbers positive and negative 2? Well, I'm going to just do, show you a number line really fast to show you kind of what's going on. If I have a negative 2 and a positive 2, and these are the numbers that are not allowed, then I technically have all of the numbers on the number line up to negative 2 but not including, any of the numbers that are in between, 
and then all of the numbers on the other side. Now we represent that by showing parentheses. Remember, if I cannot include the actual number, then I surround it with parentheses. So the domain of my function is kind of awkward the way that they want you to write this on the um, in my math lab. This is interval notation. It's from negative infinity to negative 2. Union negative 2 to positive 2. Union 2 to positive infinity. So in other words, I can have all of the numbers up to but not including negative 2. Then I got to jump over and now I have all the numbers in between negative and positive 2 and then I jump over and I have all of the numbers that are greater than positive 2. So this is what is called interval notation for my domain. I don't really like writing it like this, but you have to write it like this on the computer, so there you go. Interval notation. Let's practice another example over here. My function h of x is equal to the square root of 4 minus 3x. I don't have x in the denominator, but I do have x underneath a square root symbol. So we take the portion that's under the radical, 4 minus 3x, and we are solving for the values that are greater than or equal to 0, because those are the only numbers that I'm interested in. Now I'm going to choose to move negative 3x over to the right. I'm doing that because I want my variable to be positive. Remember that when you're solving inequalities, the only thing that's different between solving an inequality versus an equation is dividing by a negative number. So if I can move my variable to the right-hand side and avoid having a negative exponent, or I mean a negative coefficient, then I don't have to change the symbol here. If you forget to do that, just remember that when you divide by a negative coefficient, or when I divide by a negative number, my sign changes. So uh, back to what we were doing here. 4 is greater than or equal to 3x, so I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And I have x, read, always read starting with the variable, x is less than or equal to 4 thirds. Again, x is less than or equal to 4 thirds. It's written kind of backwards from what you might be used to, but if you'll always start by reading, with the, uh, reading from the variable, then it's much easier to understand. Now, I'm only interested in the values for x that are going to be less than or equal to 4 thirds. So if we're thinking about that on our number line, if here is 4 thirds and I am only interested in the values that are less than 4 thirds, then I would shade that way, right? And I have a bracket because I would be including it's less than or equal to 4 thirds. So the domain of my function now looks like negative infinity to 4 thirds, a bracket on 4 thirds, and a parentheses on negative infinity. Now you don't have to do this graphing part to be able to move from this step down to writing it in, in interval notation, but sometimes um, it just helps me to visualize how to piece together these unions, like in the previous example. The last one we're going to look at is this one. The function uh, f of x is equal to everything we have here. Now I threw this in to try to uh, show you that you can not only have a variable in the denominator that you need to be aware of, but I also have a variable underneath the radical or the square root symbol. So we have two different scenarios going on that we need to uh, handle here. So I'm going to just look at this numerator, 3x plus 12. That's the portion under the radical that has to be greater than or equal to 0. I'm going to subtract 12 to the other side and I'm going to divide by a positive 3, so I don't change my sign, and I get x has to be greater than or equal to negative 4. Now, in the denominator, x minus 5 cannot be equal to 0. So for what values cause it to be 0 when I add 5 to the other side, you can see that it's 5. So 5, when I replace it in here for x, is the only number that causes my denominator to be 0. So how do we ha write the domain? Well, I have a negative 4 here and I have a positive 5 here. The domain here for the numerator or the por portion of the numerator that I need to address says that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 4. So we would be going in this direction. 
but I cannot include, so even though I solved it for five, I cannot include five. So uh, back to what I was drawing. So if I go along, f uh, right, uh, x is greater than negative four, so I have this value here, but I can't include five, and then I can keep on going. So when I write this, it's going to look like, and it's a bracket here because of that symbol, negative four to five union five to infinity. But I don't include the five because that's the um, not allowed in my domain. So what you're going to be concerned with when you are trying to determine the domain of a function is really only two things. Is my variable x in the denominator? And if it is, then you set it equal to zero and solve and throw those, that value out. Or is my variable underneath a radical or the square root symbol? And if it is, then you take that part and solve it greater than or equal to zero. And if you get confused on how to actually write the domain in its interval notation, just kind of go over what we've already done.